It's 4th of July today, so we are wearing our red, white, and blue ears. And today we're going to be talking about the top 10 patriotic attractions in the Disney parks. This is episode 36. I'm Soraya. I'm Aurora. And together we're just, just your, your average, average Disney travelers. Happy 4th of July. Hopefully everyone has some fun plans and will be safe as they uh, celebrate today. This is one of Aurora's dad's very favorite holidays, especially when we used to live up in the Pacific Northwest and he could blow lots of things up. Yep. Lots of things going boom in the night. But uh, living in the desert, we're not allowed to do quite as many fun things. <laughs> so I don't really know. But anyways, I mean, it, I'm sure it's still one of his favorites, but um, we love the 4th of July. We're a patriotic family and we have our patriotic ears on. Um, we are going to list, now one of the great things about all the things we're gonna talk, talk about today for what you can do in the parks that is patriotic. These are things that happen every day of the year. So it does not matter when you go to Disney, um, whether it's Disneyland or Disney World, there are some great things to experience while you're um, there. So we're gonna start though, um, we've got a little countdown. This is our particular order, it may not be universal, but for us, yeah. what's our top, we're gonna start number 10 and work our way down of patriotic attractions in the Disney parks. Um, so 10 is the finale of the Muppet Vision 3D show. M yep. Okay, so do you remember this show? Not really. You don't. Oh, I know bits you and would. Pieces. You would if you. Um, well, were... I rem I remember bits and pieces, but I don't remember the entire show. Okay, yeah, but do you remember the end? No. Okay, so it's so fun. Sam the Eagle. Oh. Oh, he, it's yeah. just so funny. I mean, the whole thing, everything is going wrong, anyways. But um, but I love how he goes. He says, "This will be a salute to all nations." but mostly America. <laughs> and it really is. It's, it's just goofy and fun and um, everything goes wrong, <laughs> but it's fun. And so that made the list of our top 10. And this is actually no longer at Disneyland. They used to have it at Disneyland and at Walt Disney World, but now it is just at Walt Disney World in Disney's Hollywood Studios. But yeah, catch that the next time you're there. Yeah. I was number nine. Uh, fireworks. Oh yes, and they're back. And so fireworks are back in the Disney parks, which is so great because man, that it, I love the fireworks, but um, yeah, so fireworks are fun all of the time. Now you are not as big no. of a fan of the fireworks. <laughs> We've talked about that before. They're kind of boring. To you, they're boring. Um, even when they have like music going with it and that's still boring to you? Yeah. Okay. I would rather go away. And You'd rather be on the rides right, where, yeah, the, where the lines aren't as long. Oh, yeah. Okay. Most definitely. If you're like me, though, and you love fireworks, this is always a patriotic type of thing. And now, I'm going to be honest, Disney fireworks, most days of the year, they're not patriotic themed. They're just Disney themed, and they're lots of fun. They're really great. On the 4th of July, most years, even though fireworks are back this year, they are not doing bonus um, performances. They're not doing ex extended, I guess it would be like an extended fireworks show. Um, but usually on the 4th of July, that's what they do. They'll do like, I think they do their normal show and then they have like a extra big, huge, big, huge fireworks for the patriotic side of it for the actual holiday. And I think that's true also for like, say for, uh, for uh, New Year's that they'll do like the regular show and then they'll do the extra bonus for it. But this year that's a little different because we're still coming back. And so we're just easing back into the new fireworks, the fireworks being back again. But typically, yeah, fireworks, um, lots of fun. Both parks, Disney, or both destinations, Disney World and Disneyland. Yep. And so unless you're like Aurora, fireworks are a fun way to <laughs> get a little of the patriotic spirit into yeah. your Disney trip. Okay, what's number eight? Rivers of America. Oh, I love the Rivers of America. Um, now they do have a Rivers of America. I think they actually call it Rivers of America at Walt Disney World. To be honest, I never, never 
I haven't even thought about it. I'm pretty sure it's still called the same thing, but at Disneyland, especially um, a couple, a few years back when they started building Galaxy's Edge, they kind of had to alter uh, part of the park a little bit. And a lot of the river area did get affected. And so they went through and kind of reimagined it and made the um, areas into distinct uh, not lands, but um, regions to represent the um, the different rivers that are represented in the rivers of America. And it used to be that they would have, um, it was just kind of, or at least I believe it was kind of more of a generalization of it representing major rivers, but the four that are specifically and, and noticeably represented now, at least at Disneyland, are the Mississippi, the Columbia, the Potomac, and the Rio Grande. Rio Grande, Rio Grande. I don't even know for sure how you say that. Anyways, yeah. And so, uh, of course, when they did that, I got so excited because we used to live when we were up in the Pacific Northwest. We lived right next to the Columbia River and it's so beautiful on there. And so it was exciting that they were representing that. And it's not a perfect, you know, there's, well, you know, rivers are quite long and they have lots of different looks along the way. So I'm sure there's a part of it that looks exactly like it does at Disneyland. But um, anyways, it's just kind of fun to go in uh, either right on the boats or the train. What's your favorite way to be around the river at Disneyland? Do you have like, do you, like going on the boats or I've like never, I don't really know because we don't really go on the well, we go on the train and we have been on the boats. They go on the train, what train? The Disneyland's train, it goes no. all the way around. Oh, well, I don't remember that much. Maybe you just are off playing when, I, I mean, I have, we've been on it so many times. I don't know. Um, Is that the one that goes like? It goes the through back? Splash Mountain and you can see the, the, the parts of Splash Mountain, like inside where you well, see. No, wait, hold on. How does it go in like space? Mountain? Yes. Okay, that one. <laughs> oh um, my goodness! Well, I, love I don't you. remember Rivers of America that much in it. I especially love riding the train around Rivers of America. Like it, it eventually will make its way to the near the back of the park, which is parts of it are where the Rivers of America are. Like when it's going. Anyways, it, anyways, it's it's uh, what I really like is when it hits that part and it's kind of like sunset. It's just so pretty. I, I think it's beautiful. And I like doing the, the boats as well. Um, we have not done the sailing ship Columbia. We've been on it when it was parked, but we haven't ridden it around the river. We have done the Mark Twain riverboat. And then at Disney World, it's the Liberty Bell. I think, yeah, it's the Liberty Bell uh, riverboat. We've done that around. Although maybe you haven't done the one at Walt Disney World. I'm pretty sure you've done the one at Disneyland though. I don't really know. I think it's, I like it. It's relaxing. That's probably why it doesn't stand out to you. It's not thrilling. Yeah. It's not I'm not exciting. really a relaxing person. I think it's awesome. So even if you're not on the boats or riding the train, you can still like you're walking around it. Or like if you take the raft over to Tom Sawyer Island, you do that. Um, oh, and another thing that, um, the canoes are opening again or just opened again at Disneyland, which we've never been able to do because um, it's never open when we're there, at least not that I ever notice. <laughs> but anyways, okay. So I guess we'll, uh, that's, I guess we don't have a whole lot to add to the information <laughs> about Rivers of America. <laughs> well, unfortunately, okay, let's just be honest. A lot of the things on this list aren't the most exciting attractions. I feel like just patrioticness isn't the priority when you go to well when Disney. you go to Disneyland a lot of well especially since we don't usually go in fact we've never been there on the 4th of July um, but these are still patriotic things that are there at the parks but they're yeah. not your focus I know no. because they're gonna like for instance the very <laughs> next one What's Great my... moments with Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> I've never done that. I don't think you have. I've done I've it never. a couple the of most... times, but I don't think I've ever done it with the you. The most I've experienced with that is through the um, Imagineering story. Oh, just watching about it, about them creating yeah. the animatronic and everything for to, it. Yeah, they used to break the chair. 
it used oh the when it's when it sits down when they were still working on it it would break the chair when it goes sit down so you have to work on the uh, programming a bit more yep so do you remember from that at least why when it was first created for the attraction Oh, yes, for the uh, showcase thingy. The New York World yes. uh, World Fair in yeah, was it 1964. Yeah. Yes. And then I think it was the next year that it got brought to Disneyland. Um, but now it's it's a stage, they call it a stage show, feature an audio animatronic that is a representation of President Lincoln. And, and it is cool. Um, it's just not exciting. It's not thrilling, but it is cool. It's a good place to take a power nap. <laughs> That's what everyone says. Yeah. <laughs> but if you were, if you were really looking to yeah. have some patriotic experiences, especially or if you need like an like educate, you really like history. Yeah. If you like history or if you're taking your kids out of school and you need to make sure there's an educational experience in there somewhere, it's, it's definitely a good, a good one. Um, I would say that the same is true for the next, our next thing. What are we? Number six. Yeah. Hall of Presidents. Right. Okay. So the great moments with Mr. Lincoln is at Disneyland. Hall of Presidents is at Walt Disney World and it's in Magic Kingdom and it's similar feel type of attraction where you go in to the theater seating and there's audio animatronics, but this time it's, there's one represented for every president of the United States. And at the time, at this time, it's currently still being re refinished or refurbished for to include the newest president of the United States, Joe Biden. And so they're not open yet, but um, every time a new president is elected, they add his animatronic and that becomes part of the show. So anyway, so that is kind of the same thing. Have you, do you remember ever going, because I can't remember for sure if we actually had you go in on that one or not. I know I've done it, but I'm trying to remember the last time I did it because we do not do it every time. No, I don't think I have. I think I've only if done it a I couple have, of times. Then I was real young and I don't remember any of it. Yeah, so. and it might have been when you were younger. Um, yeah, I, I for the life of me, I can't remember for sure if we. I think I might have done it once when Donald Trump was in it, so it had to be within the last eight years. But I don't remember. Not eight years, four years. Thank goodness, four years. But um, I don't think you were with me I, I don't remember to be honest I can't remember Maybe, yeah so anyways but this but it is cool again because this is historical too because it changes every time we have a new president it's a really neat um way to see it growing and changing and shifting with our history so that's pretty neat because like Mr. Lincoln it's the same thing every year it hasn't grown or changed but this is actually true to what is current for what our history is now. So Yay. that's kind of neat. Um, all right, what's your next one? The American Adventure. All right, so this is also at Walt Disney World, but this time we're over in Epcot in the World Showcase. So the American Adventure is, I believe, the, it's kind of like the name of the whole showcase, I believe, but then there's yeah. also the show within the showcase. So again, we don't do a whole lot in the American in, in in this showcase because we live America every day <laughs> and yeah. so when we're in Epcot we really like to experience different um countries and cultures yeah. and traditions we and go things. everywhere else except America we do sometimes and I know we have done it before I especially really like doing it in um the holiday during the holidays because I like listening to all of the holiday stories and traditions that each of the countries share and they do ha have that for um America as well, they, when we went, or when I went, um, it was, they shared about Hanukkah and Kwanzaa, and I found those really interesting. Um, but even just going um, for the patriotic experience, it's, it is still pretty cool. Um, fun fact, and I think we've mentioned this before, that the, um, the flag from the 9-11, there's a flag from 9-11 in the Epcot. Um, in in this showcase, which is really cool. That's a um, kind of a great honor. And um, anyways, yeah, so there's there's some pretty neat stuff. The the show itself. Um, oh, I was oh, oh, that's the wrong one. Um, yes, 
Yeah. So in, in the show itself, not just the, like where the showcase is in the show inside that showcase, it's a, um, another auto animatronic animatronic figures that have, and they have a screen. And so there's like a, um, projections and patriotic music. Um, and it talks about some of America's story. And so that's pretty cool. Um, I think it's a little bit more interesting to me personally, that's why it's higher on the list than some of the others. I think that um, it's a little bit more um, representing what America is a little bit more, has a little bit of the history of the Mayflower, the Boston Tea Party, um, things like that, the Declaration of Independence. And so I think that's pretty cool. And for sure on a holiday weekend, 4th of July weekend, that would be a really fun way to take some time to do that. But even, even a, on other times of the year, I think it's a it's a good one that's worthy to check out. And we have done it a couple times. I just don't, I'm just trying to remember. I don't always remember like how long, cause we've, the last time we were there, we did not do it. I remember that. So it yeah. might've been the one before that. And that might've been when you were quite a bit younger. All right, so what is number four? Liberty Square. What do you remember about Liberty Square? Do you have any? No? no. Um, so Liberty Square, I think is a really pretty area. Um, this is where they have the replica of the Liberty Bell um, and the Liberty Tree, yeah. And so I think that's really cool. Um, this is not, there's not a whole, whole lot right in that area, it feels like. Um, this is where Hall of Presidents is located. Um, but I just think it's a, it's a quiet, it, it's a little, it's, it has a different feel than the rest of the parks because the rest of the parks, I feel like they're telling all these fairy tale stories and they're telling, um, you know, all these sometimes it's from movies or whatever that are going on, you know, whether we're talking, you know, Star Wars and Fantasyland and Tomorrowland and all this. But then at, at uh, Liberty Square, which is one of the lands in Magic Kingdom, it's, it's telling our story and it's, it's just a piece of America. And it's just, I think it's really cool. I, I, um, I do enjoy being in that land a little bit. I like to sit under the, under the Liberty tree. Um, I just think it's really pretty. So, but you don't have very many memories <laughs> okay maybe we need to do a patriotic trip to disney world and revisit yeah. some of these okay now we'll get to ones that i think you well this um, one you, you have some memories of i surely hope i know definitely the first one okay what's number three um main street usa okay so main street usa is in both the park or both disney world and disneyland and do you know what it was patterned after Walt's home. Yeah, where he yeah. grew up. Yeah. yeah, where Walt Disney. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's called Ooh. Marceline, Missouri, and it yeah, was in the Missouri. early 1900s. But it's like, it's patterned after that kind of, but it's really made to represent any small town in America in the early, early 1900s. Wait, is this just Main Street? Main Street, USA. I didn't realize USA was the whole name. Yeah, that's part of the name is Main Street, USA. Oh, so cool. it represents okay. any little American town. I just thought it was Main Street, and then I was thinking, oh, you have to say that's probably Disney World since it's longer. Nope, it's for all of them. <laughs> that was my logic. <laughs> and so Walt Disney said, Main Street USA is America at the turn of the century, the crossroads of an era. The gas lamps and the electric lamps, the horse-drawn car and the auto car, Main Street is everyone's hometown, the heartland of America. And that's really what it was designed to be. And so you know, you've got a little town square right in the front where you've got city yeah. hall and all of that and then you go down and there's the shops and and it's just cute and quaint and just nostalgic and I always love when you could see the change in the progress from the lamps that like he said it from the gas lamps to the electric lamps and things and that's it's just really neat and if you pay attention to the details you start to see more and more exactly how they're represent or, or um, how they're portraying that and so it's pretty cool um yeah do you have any fun memories or thoughts about that about main street besides that you can get ice cream on main street and <laughs> do windows. some good shopping yeah the windows the windows are great and they have um so they they do the writing on the, the windows where like they put the words and lettering and stuff um and they have if you go ever just looking down you'll you may recognize some of the names but if not just search them because they are people that have um, affected and were part of the development of Disney, um, Walt Disney Company and the Disney parks and things like that. And so it's pretty cool. It's people who have contributed 
to um, the Disney story. And so that's neat. But yeah, there's just a lot of really cool, cute stuff on Disney or on Main Street. And it's the first thing you walk into. It's, it's actually a themed land. And it's the first one that you enter as you go into Disneyland Park or Magic Kingdom. So. All right, it's your introduction to the park, I guess you could say. All right, so number two. Voices of Liberty. Do you remember what the Voices of Liberty are? No, I had to Google this one. <laughs> And, and I know you've heard them before. You probably were just off playing in the back while we were paying attention, but they're an acapella group in Disney, in Walt Disney World. Um, they usually are wearing period clothing, like from the 1800s or so. And they sing, um, they sing a lot of patriotic songs. They usually are in that, um, the American Showcase, the American Pavilion um, in Epcot. I think right now they've been relocated because of COVID to a different location, but usually they're in the rotunda there and the, the quality of sound is pretty cool. Um, but they're just really, really fun to listen to. They're good. I think it's usually roughly maybe 15 minutes that they'll do. You don't have to sit there for the whole thing because really people are just kind of standing around. It's not like you're in a theater or something. Um, but if you catch them singing, it's just really cool. It's a nice little treat to listen to. Yeah. You have no memories of that? Nope. <sighs> That's all right. Um, yeah, what I hear, I hear right now, they are at least on the, the Disney website, it says that they're at America Gardens Theater. Um, I don't know if that's going to be like a permanent new home or if it's just temporary. Um, I guess we'll kind of see, but that's where they, you can find them now. Okay, what else? The last one is the flag retreat ceremony. Number one. The flag retreat ceremony, we you do recall, right? Yes. You do remember because we've done that a few times. Mm -hmm. um, they do this both at Disneyland and Disney World. And um, what, what do you remember about it? They have a band playing. Yeah, usually they'll have like the Disneyland band and or the Dapper Dance. Sometimes they're both there. Sometimes it's one or the other. It's, it's, it kind of changes a lot um, over the years. And so different times we've gone, I've seen it done different ways, but generally they have music that's patriotic music. Mm -hmm. um, they usually also invite members of the service who are there visiting the parks that day to participate in some way or form. It used to be that you could go I don't know if you just went to guest services or something ahead of time and let them know and they pick somebody who would be there and help them um, to be part of the ceremony. But the lot more recent times that we've gone, it's more that they just invite everyone to come. Um, those that are um, have been in one of the branches of service and they surround, they kind of just go into that circle where the flagpole is. And as each branches song or hymn is being played, they stand up and they are recognized for that part of it. And then afterwards they do the, the retreat. It used to be that um, almost, they, they like they would actually walk with the flag, you know, and all this, and they don't do that as much anymore, at least that I saw the last few couple times we've gone. But, um, but they do have, every day they do the ceremony. I'm not positive if they're doing it yet for COVID, but it's generally around obviously dusk or sun, when the sun's gonna go down. Um, so the time can change um, depending on the time of year. But, um, but it is a really quick, cool way to kind of end the day part of your time at Disney and, um, and then it ushers in the evening, but it's just a fun little way to take a break. And it's just cool to, to be able to stand there and witness them lowering the flag. And usually the Star Spangled Brett Banner is, is played at some point. And if, and they also have other patriotic songs and it's just cool. And it's every day of the year, not just 4th of July, of course. So, yeah. So what are your favorites of the different patriotic things? Cause obviously this isn't maybe the teenagers favorite part of Disney <laughs> clearly because <laughs> Poor Aurora is like, uh, this is one of my more boring oh. <laughs> episodes where I don't really have anything to contribute. <laughs> I don't remember anything. But like, what do you enjoy? Is there anything on this Main list? Street. Main Street is your favorite? Yeah. Is that because you just have to get through Main Street to get anywhere? Or is it because you no. enjoy parts of Main Street? I think it's cool. Yeah. It's also probably tied to nostalgia. Yeah, nostalgia it's, is there. Yeah. But, but which, yeah. Yeah. 
So just being on Main Street. Is... <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I mean, because um... because that's kind of, I mean, this is the truth. Not everything. We always say there's something for everybody at Disney. If you're a patriotic person, there are things for you at Disney. If you're a historical person, there are things for you at Disney. If you're a teenager, there are other things <laughs> for you at Disney. <laughs> Just maybe not all the historical patriotic parts. Not even the fireworks, which a lot of teenagers do like, but some teenagers are going to, no, not necessarily, because a lot of teenagers, even if they would normally like fireworks, are going to like, oh, oh, fireworks yeah, or also, short lines. I'm going to go on the short I lines. I don't really like fireworks. So yeah. Much. But, and that's true. But, and, and I wouldn't say that you're weird in that way. I think there are plenty of people who share that opinion. And so I'm unique, you are unique. Of course you are. <laughs> but um, anyway, so yeah, so this is, it's a fun time of year. It is a fun time to be at Disney. It is a busy time to be at Disney a lot of times on 4th of July weekend. Um, but there are certainly, uh, whether you're going now or any other time of year, um, these are things that are worth looking for if you're interested in seeing them. I enjoy them. I will admit even it's not like every visit we do all of these things. It's been a lot, you know, it, we go a few visits in between some of them. Clearly, I haven't been on most of these things. Or, or you just attention. don't remember because sometimes it was when you were so younger. So I probably also wasn't really paying attention either. That's probably true. That's fair <laughs> to say. Yeah. So maybe these aren't the best for your young kids or teenagers, but... Unless you're, unless you're taking them out of school and you're making them do something educational while you're there, but it's all right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope that you have a fun and safe 4th of July and celebrate and enjoy your time together with your family and all the blessings that we have for living in this great country, including the Disney parks. <laughs> yeah. So that's it for us. We'll see you next week. See you.